It's time for another 16-bit superhero review segment, and this was all brought on by the fact that 2018's incredible Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4, developed by Insomniac, blew my mind, and I said to myself, you know, there's a bunch of 16-bit superhero games that I never played when they came out for whatever reason, so I went on the hunt on eBay and Craigslist, and I ordered a bunch of titles. They all came to me in little fits and starts, but I got a nice little collection of these games, and I thought I'd better review some of these titles and let you know how I feel about them today in 2019, even though these are super old. The one I'm reviewing today is 25 years old, as a matter of fact. It's 1994's Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. This was one of the first cartridges that I tracked down, and there was a lot of buzz on the internet for this game. Holy mackerel, lots of people still love this title, lots of fond memories. I took some Instagram shots, showed off that I got the bright red Genesis cartridge. Yes, I know the Super Nintendo cartridge is the preferable one because the music is better. I know, I've heard that many times. But the Genesis game plays fine, the music's okay. Honestly, this is a game that brings me a lot of joy. I did look back at some of the reviews for this game when it came out initially, and it's another beat-em-up, it's another brawler. So many of these superhero games were kind of like riffs on Final Fight, you know, where you're crossing across the screen and you're just beating up on totally generic bad guy after generic bad guy, and there's a lot of that in this game. There's lots of great cameos, though, from the Marvel Universe, which are really fun. Cloak and Dagger and Captain America, and you've got Shriek and Deathlock and Demogoblin and Carrion, as well as Carnage. And you can play as Spider-Man or as Venom, and there's a little bit of a branching path thing that happens right there. You do have the ability to swing and web zip and stuff, but you're going to be beating up a lot of sort of dudes, just like regular type dudes that just don't seem to fit like they're fighting Spider-Man wave after wave after wave and Spider-Man is just mercilessly just beating the crap out of them and throwing them around and throwing newspapers on them. It's still fun though. There is this tactile connection. When I pop this cartridge in, I just sort of get lost in the... I guess I get a bit numb to the action that is happening, but I also love it. It's just really fun to play, you know? It's tight, it's tight controls, it feels really slick. I mean, there are some frustrating bits. I think the chunk of the game that frustrates me the most is when I'm climbing up a wall and there's little arrows telling me that I have to swing over to this wall or that wall and there's these attacks coming down from the top of the screen, from off screen, and the arrows are kind of telling you to avoid them but you don't quite know where they're gonna be and sometimes you get caught in an animation and boom, you'll go all the way down to the bottom and have to start again and that, that got a little bit frustrating. It's also tough, so you're not know, given lots and lots of lives. There are power-ups and secrets and things like that that you can find that will extend your continues and extend your life count. Definitely recommend that you go off and get those because this game can be challenging like a lot of 16-bit software was, and it can be a little bit frustrating because of that. For the most part, though, this game just brings me lots of joy. There's great little comic book cut sequences. The music by an artist named Green Jelly, I think, is kind of funky and uh, propulsive and, you know, you know, fits the quirkiness, the sort of comic book pop visual style that's there. There was some really, really nice sprite work done on this cartridge back in the day. I don't know, the cel-shaded graphics of the characters, they really punch off the screen. And it plays fast, and it plays fluid, and it's fun to be at these different characters. It's only a single-player game, and I'll talk about Separation Anxiety in another video, which is the sequel to this game. But I also love that I have a bright red cartridge, and I was able to track down the box and the manual and the whole thing, and it's a great part of my collection. I think Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage is an absolute classic, and it's a fantastic fit in my 16-bit superhero collection. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10.